to do like one big thing that'll people just Dude, perfect. We did it in C. That was pretty epic. That was pretty <laughs> That was kind of epic. That, that, was, that was pretty good. Alrighty. We, we could have done that. The, and then I think it already is. All right, welcome to our podcast. My <laughs> name's Michelle. I have my friend Addison here. Say hello. Hello. So we're going to talk <clears> about Sonic 2, and I specifically wanted to talk about Sonic 2 with Addison because not only is she the only person I can stand to be with, but she is a casual Sonic fan. She's played a Sonic game for like 10 minutes. However long you held me at gunpoint to play it? Yeah, I held her at gunpoint to play it. So I love Sonic. I have Sonic comics in my backpack right now. I have Sonic boxers. I have everything. So I think it's really cool to talk about this movie and how it compares to a casual audience versus like a more fan-based audience. So you want to go ahead and take it away with that? Um, well, I mean, from just a casual perspective, it's, you know, a good and enjoyable movie. I don't feel like I have to know what's going on. Like, obviously, any casual watcher who's going to see Sonic would at least know Sonic and yeah. a little bit of the lore, like the characters, like Tails and Knuckles and that. But, like, I didn't feel like I had to understand the entire lore. Like, when, when the Master Emerald came in, I, I didn't have to understand it because they, they gave me a brief explanation without like going into it for too long. So they were yeah. like, this is what it is, this is why it's bad. That, keep that in mind. And then they continued on. Yeah, no, so obviously like she's kind of going into, there's going to be spoiler warnings. I don't know why you'd watch this if you haven't seen the movie, but go watch the movie first, you know? It's a good movie. <laughs> it, it actually is. So that's something else I wanted to get to is it's obviously a kid's film. And I know I was telling her, I was standing in the theater and I'm seeing all these little kids running around with their Sonic jammies. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. And I'm sitting there and it dawns on me and I'm like, I am not the target demographic. It's not cute, it's normal. But at the same time, you kind of are because they do understand that their target audience isn't just children. Like they understand like that there's people who've played Sonic when it came out. And now obviously they're not kids That's anymore. me, I was born in 1991. <laughs> Okay, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. But they, they do understand, it's not like your typical like happy-go-lucky kids movie, it's like Sonic, like you could enjoy it even without being a literal child. It actually, it is pretty good. There, there is one fart joke, which is a massive upgrade from the last movie, which was two, three fart jokes. And three times they flossed? He flossed, he flossed. Um, there Jim is flossing in this movie, trigger warning, um, but it's only once, and it's kind of like a joke. Jim Carrey flosses, that's Jim, thing. Jim Carrey does floss. If you don't want to see this movie, yes, you do, because Jim Carrey flosses. You want, you want to see this movie, because Jim Carrey flosses. That's, that's the plot. <laughs> Jim Carrey was the plot That's the why it sold the most this weekend. Yeah, you know what, it did. So it is the number one movie, which means it just sold the most tickets this weekend. Which is interesting because it's been battling with Morbius. And, you know, as a movie theater worker, I do hear that, like, which ones are selling more. So I think it's interesting every time I'd go in, I'd be like, oh, Mor Morbius is selling the most. You know, it, th this is crazy. We need to put more Morbius showings out. Like, just from a movie theater perspective, what mm -hmm. I'm hearing from my management. And then they're like, no, 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 Sonic's not doing better. We need to put out more <laughs> Sonic movies. You know, we need to have more times for that. It, it's doing better. They're, they're definitely battling back and forth, which... I mean, of course I want Sonic to win. I don't, I don't even know what Morbius is about. I don't care. If you watch Marvel, I hate you. I don't want to talk to you. I do think it's very um, hard because is it like- It is Marvel. Okay, it's Marvel go ahead, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> um, because like, obviously Marvel. And that's the main reason why people are seeing it because like Morbius is a new character. He's, I think he's a vampire. I think that's the plot. Um, okay, Castlevania. <laughs> <laughs> but, because um, it's Marvel, it's, like the name brand of movies, people are gonna be like, oh, I gotta go see it. So that's, yeah. that's why it's selling the most. Marvel movies typically do do that. But doo -doo. like. <laughs> you said doo doo. You should be in the Sonic movie with that joke. <laughs> Your target audience is kids. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> go ahead, no. No, okay. But um, typically, Marvel movies. Um, Theaters prepare for that. They're like, oh, this is going to be our best seller. We're going to make a lot of money. I don't think anyone was really expecting the Sonic 2 movie to blow up like it did. Like, it was going to be big, but it was going to be a transitional big movie before our next one. Like, a, a small moneymaker. That's what you guys saw as a theater, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
We thought it was gonna. We knew it was gonna be busy with kids, but we didn't think it was gonna blow up this much. Yeah, because we sat next, we sat next to these eighteen-year-old uh, boys, and they were laughing at the jokes like alongside me. I couldn't really hear you over on my other side mm -hmm. because I, I was cracking up. I thought it was so funny. I was also giggling every time anything happened from the game. Like there's a, there's a coffee shop called Mean Bean, which if you know Sonic, mean, uh, Dr. Robotics Mean Bean Machine, that was a really good game. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, it wasn't. I, I, oh. I it was a puzzle game, so I don't like it. It was like it was a risk of Puyo Puyo. She didn't like it because it was a puzzle game. Yeah, but I love the reference and like. You know the helicopters at the end? I do like that it was his uh, base, too. I think that, that was really cool, because he would tell me about the mean bean, and then um, Stone was in there. And yeah. Like, and then he, like, got it all situated. I was like, oh, this is crazy. And there, it's like a blinker, if, if you'll, and you'll miss it, but they're, like, when he's pulling up the screen, of course, it's the maid outfit, which is a joke. But then they have, like, the original outfit, which we'll, we'll actually show later in the podcast, but, like, Robotics' original outfit, which is really cool. Um, but then there's planes at the end when they're talking about like the gun soldiers, and it says S A. I think it says S A two on it, which is Sonic Adventure two. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and the, like gun like shadow and stuff is from Sonic Adventure one or two. I don't know. If if you like modern Sonic, I don't like you either. Oh, so you still like a lot of people. No, if if you like classic Sonic, you're a chat. I love you. <laughs> Anything past Sonic Adventure. Continuing on with the box office information, not how much you hate people. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it did make fifty eight million this opening weekend if I'm correct? Yeah, the opening weekend for, um, actually for Sonic 2 was 71 million. 71? Sonic 2, so this is- a, Oh, that was Sonic 1. Yeah, this is pretty much like the opening weekend, because I mean it came out, as of, we're recording this on the 12th, it came out the 8th, we went to go see it, and it made about 71 million. Last one made 58, and you can, you can blame it on the pandemic, you can blame it on uh, the original version of the design, which we will also get to. I do um, think I want to blame it on the stigma around mid video game movies, which I know you were telling me about when we were at the theater. You were so smart with these transitions. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, video game movies, if you know, are notorious for sucking, quite frankly. So we have the, the Mario movie from, the, from 1993. And which in comparison to the 58 million and the 71 million that the Sonic movies made on their opening weekend, this one made uh, a whopping 8 million. Woohoo! Good for it. <laughs> so yeah, this is what the movie looked like, and this is what the game looks like. And I don't know why these movie directors think that they should keep doing that. They're going to take video games that are successful, and they're like, "What if I made it look horrid and disgusting? Then people will want it, right?" You're missing why we like the video game in the first place. Exactly. Like, I know that, like, you know. It wasn't even like during the time where like live action is a big thing. That's when the Sonic movie was live action, you know. But like, I think they would have been better off just doing an animated movie, yeah. especially with with Mario. And it's crazy because like their budget was forty eight million. It was. It and was in a comparison, lot. Uh, Sonic One had a budget of ninety five million, and Sonic Two had a, a budget of one hundred and ten million, which like. Sonic One would be the better to go off of since it was more of the risky movie. It was more like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna try and make another video game movie and hope it doesn't fail. Right. So, so it did fail in the beginning with its its designing. Yeah. So let's let's talk about the design. Um, <laughs> why? <laughs> what, what what about this scream Sonic the Hedgehog? So he <laughs> looks like he looks like a Victorian child. He was thrown in acid and then thrown next to this cop man. This is not what an anf anf Humanized hedgehog should look like an an anthropomorphic. I, I I'm trying my hardest. I can't try harder. I, <laughs> he he looks like he just looks too much like a human, and I think that was their big like why he's a hedgehog, and like it's live action, so it's kind of like kind of fit like the the bounds of real life. I disagree. I feel like if they make it cartoony. It contrasts it better and makes the point of the movie of Sonic in the human world makes it un so much more enunciated, so much just better. Mm -hmm. You know, I, as I was saying, they kind of did play with it a little bit though. They've proven they could play with. They had the Clifford the Big Red Dog um, live action film, which you know Clifford was a big red dog. Clearly, he's like a real life animal, so it was easier to make him look like that real real animal. Um, they had Peter Rabbit. Which of course also looked like his animal uh, counterpart, but that they did have uh, Pikachu. Yeah, Pikachu. That was not, Peter Rabbit was also James Marsden, the guy who plays Donut Lord. Yeah. What's his name? Tom. 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 Sorry. Um, <laughs> did they have Pikachu? Um, I've seen. They haven't. It. It was okay. I don't remember much from it, um, but it wasn't bad. Like the design was good because it looked like Pikachu. It looked like what it was supposed to. They didn't. To. Sh 
And again, I guess they can kind of be like, oh, well, he's not a real animal, so it was easier to make him look like what he is. But like, but like Sonic could pass for a Pokemon. He really, like, he's a blue hedgehog. Blue hedgehog spins in a ball. Blue, spins in a ball, stands on two legs, and has huge quills. Like, huge quills and some dogs. For a hedgehog, he's got some big dogs. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so then I wanted to talk about, um, of course, Sonic 2. And obviously, as the video game fan, no, I, I no, lost it. I lost it when I saw this poster. I was like, this is the coolest thing since sliced bread, before sliced bread. She's like, trying to make me find out if they have the poster that she can have, by the way. I am going to go to every AMC. If you work at AMC and you have this poster, I will pay you money. I am serious. Please. I want it so bad. This has just turned into <laughs> Michelle wants this poster. Please give it to me. I want it so bad. Because, like, okay, it's on two. Its whole tagline was, are you up to it? And then they're all like, Genesis or Sega does when Nintendo don't. Like it was rad, it was cool. And it, oh, I can't express it. Like it's, it's all just like, I can't articulate it. There we go, I can't express it, I can't articulate it. But anyways, so it's really cool. You got Knuckles and like Little 2, which is just awesome. And Jim Carrey, fantastic. Everything about him is fantastic. Oh, I didn't even notice Knuckles was there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and you have like, you have the aspects from the actual movie. Hmm. And the movie isn't just a copy of Sonic 2. So actually, if you watch the plot, it's basically mashing two and three together, which is pretty cool, and taking its own liberties. And that's what I like, because you know what? I would adore a movie, a Sonic movie that was purely game plot, because I love the game. <laughs> but I like how they're standing out. I like how they're doing something different, because you don't want to take a media and do the same thing, just in a different form. What's the point? Everyone's going to get bored. Yeah. It's, it's going to get you know, played out. People are going to be like, OK, well, this is just going to be the next Sonic game. I know what's going to happen. Right. So, like, if they add a little bit of pizzazz to it, you know, like with this one, with um, throwing knuckles in it instead of just, you know, following the games, which you told me was just Sonic meets Tails type thing. Sonic, Sonic 2 was just, they, yeah, basically mean Tails. And of course, Sonic 3 um, is the whole, like, robotic dupes knuckles, does stuff with the Master Emerald. And I think they execu execute that pretty fun. I, I, you know what? It's, it's, it's a definitely a, kind of not a lowbrow joke, but it's like a simple joke when, he's, when knuckles on the cliff. And Robotic looks like he's going to betray him, which we all were like, okay, that's going to happen. And then he's like, oh, it's stairs. And he walks the little egg bots and they work together again. Like, that was kind of funny. Yeah. I, I do think it had, like, simple humor like that and not just full of outdated humor. It had a lot of outdated humor. The first one was... Yes. I mean, the first one was delayed a whole year, so, like, I get it. But also, like... I think they learned from their mistakes with the outdated humor with this one. There was only one fart joke and one time he flossed. One fart joke, I feel like the flossing was ironic to a degree too, because it was just robotic for like a second. I think he was kind of like mocking Sonic in a way. Yeah. I, was like, I like that. That was that was okay. He was mocking Sonic. Because Sonic dashes into the car and he just sits there and starts flossing and <laughs> Tom's like car is cut in half and he's like His Tacoma man. His Tacoma, no <laughs> It's so sad. Oh my god, yeah. But no. I, I do think you know, the movie in general was really enjoyable. Again, I, I never played these games. I didn't grow up with them, you know. I know my parents, I know my parents did, and they, they enjoyed it. Um, but, you know, I think if my mom, who played the Sonic games a lot, were to play it, she'd be more on your side, and she'd be like, oh, this is so cool because- Can I take your I'll censor that out. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, can you censor that one out? <laughs> Anyways. I do think that they also did a good Can job. Can I? They were busting. They did do a good job with executing this, which um, uh, this scene in particular, which is, um, I, I really enjoyed it, like from like a cinematic point of view. When they went into this little, what was it like a? It was like a temple. Yeah, a little people people were equating it to Labyrinth Zone, and I, I that kind of flew over my head. Not gonna lie, which I fake Sonic fan. It's. For the non-Sonic fans, it's the temple, and they go in it. And I do think <laughs> I'm just so disappointed in myself. Go ahead, as you should. Um, but there is there's this one scene that we had displayed earlier where it was Sonic and Knuckles fighting, and it's just like their bright colors mixed with this like you know gray and like not gray, um, brown earthy tone yeah. walls. Yeah, earthy tones. Yeah. And it it just looked really cool because then you also had the emerald, which is clearly very bright <laughs> if it's got a beacon going through the sky. Yeah, and like it's really cool because all the main characters have like the bright primary colors. Mm -hmm. Addison will tell you, 
we're watching the movie in the first hour you know they introduce knuckles in a pretty cool way so sonic's winding up to go punch robotnik and robotnik's like you know moves over and just knuckles because it wrecks him punches him through a wall and a tv i lost it i lost it i was like he also punched him out the house later he punched him outside the side of the house the house and, and then Tails drives in a cop car. Right there. <laughs> that that was good. That was so good. I see. I think it's moments like that that you know just make it enjoyable, especially to an older audience. Like, <laughs> obviously, a kid's gonna think funny noise, funny impacts, funny. But like, I don't know. I just feel like it was something that I could enjoy as well as someone who's almost eighteen and, and watching a Sonic movie in the theater. And it was an actual conflict. It wasn't like a kitty conflict. I, I there is. There are some contrived plot points because Sonic, why didn't he just take the compass? You would argue, so he could take him the compass and just ran to the Master Emerald. Mm -hmm. And did it, he has the power of super speed. We saw it in the first movie. We saw it in this movie when like everything slows down. I do think that's a plot hole. But you know what? I don't care. I love this movie. I do it's think a it's a plot hole. <laughs> but if you think about it, he also was, you know, concerned with Tails. It seems like him and Tails had like a really close bond that he, he didn't want to leave him behind. Be yeah. Like, you know, you stay here. Wow. Fuck you. You know? Yeah. Ooh. That that's that's a big part of Sonic's character that I'm really glad that kept intact is that he fights for his friends and he fights for what he thinks is right. He doesn't want the Master Emerald to have that power. He just even at the end he wants to protect gave his family. It up. Yeah, he wants to protect his family, which is, you know, the Donut Lord, Maddie, now Tails. Like yeah, he, he cares about Tails, Tails a lot. Especially and Knuckles like the, the now? avalanche. Yeah. And yeah, now Knuckles is his homie. I do I do remember Robotnik and Knuckles being like, What he didn't come for the Master Emerald, he just or no, the compass. They had the compass on the Evelyn. Yeah. He didn't come for the compass. He went to go save the fox. Yeah, Knuckles is like thinking and is like, his little like rock It took him like the whole movie for it to process fully. Yeah, he's like, oh. he's like, oh, this stupid hedgehog. But again, I do think like, it, it's very good comedy, not only for children, you know, to keep them fully entertained, but it's also really good um, for the older audience. And I think a big part of that is Jim Carrey himself. He does a great job at just like, being entertaining, being funny. He's he is a very funny, funny man. He does a very spunky job at um, being Robotnik. I do think he's a really good Robotnik. Yeah, um, moving in on that, uh, Jim Carrey. He is sixty years old. What a man. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> so he's sixty years old. Excuse me. Anyway. Moving Anyways. on. That was really rude. I'm cutting <laughs> that, that. That was that was rude. <laughs> so, um, what was I getting at? So I really like the way they did his design too. Is obviously you have this first one, which they have to sell more of the modern world rather than Sonic's friends. Mm -hmm. So you know he looks like a normal person, and he comes in. He's super arrogant to like the military guy. He's like, "Who's in charge here?" And the guy's like, "That'd be me." He goes, "Ah, no, it's me now." And I'm like, "Oh, it's it's so good, so perfect." Jim Carrey, he. I can't even describe it. He does such a good job at this role. It's he's the perfect person to to play this role. He he's got the arrogant Robotnik, like crazy obsessed with the defeating Sonic and 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 the pompousness. Robotnik he, has always been a big pompous character, never taken too seriously. And he does a great job at keeping Robotnik serious while also at the same time not able to be taken seriously. Like he thinks he's he's a really serious man. But he also he also like flosses and and he's beefing with a like three eleven blue hedgehog, <laughs> who's twelve years old. <laughs> he, yeah, he's like twelve in this movie. Um, Jesus Christ. And then yeah, obviously on the right or on the left, the B. Your right, my left. Over there. <laughs> you Over have, here. This is what robotics supposed to look like more so in the game. So here's his game design. He's bald, and you can tell by his pose. Like this is not like a very serious man. That, they, that's. That's not a serious man. Man, man's is. That is the man's man who hot. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> that is a man who thinks he's serious, but is is not. He's not that. He's not able to be taken seriously. Look, look at them. Look at that pose. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to be that. I but yeah. That. So a little bit about Jim Carrey is that he started stand up in 1977. Uh, with his dad in Toronto, and then about the 90s, he started getting into like actual movies. Yeah, that's when he started getting recognized. Yeah, he was starting to get that recognition. Um, uh, so he was like 
the perfect role, and I think the producers of Sonic 2 did say they don't want to replace him, correct? Yeah, so IGN had an interview with Jim Carrey himself, or I'm sorry, IGN had an interview with the producers of Sonic 2, and obviously we've heard Jim Carrey wants to retire. He's only going to come back if there's a script lined in gold for him. I don't think that script's going to be Sonic 3. I adore Sonic 3, but like... I, I do think that like, obviously as a, as a watcher of the movie, I would like Jim Carrey to come back and be, you know, Robotnik for however long they keep dragging this out for. <laughs> <laughs> Beat the head, Charlie, yeah. just keep going. Just they, keep going. they have other options, though. I would love to see Metal, Metal Sonic in these movies, because I actually want to talk about the Sonic OVA in a different podcast, but I adore Sonic and Metal Sonic and just, like, everything about it and, like... <sighs> I gotta stop myself here. I wanna talk with the OVA forever. <laughs> but like, they have other options and they, they teased a different character at the end of the movie. That's a perfect villain. They have the villain from the games that that character's from. They do have Robotnik's sidekick, Dr. Stone. That could they could go take that over. route, you know. I do think Stone also fulfills that like funny but serious vibe. I think he's a little more serious than Robotnik himself. But he does have those moments where he's funny. But I don't know if that's because. Uh, Robotnik is when yeah. he gets funny. What if he goes ballistic? Like, he just goes like, like really like. Like a, a real threat. You kill the senpai. He's gonna kill you someone. You kill the senpai. He yeah, he he drew little hearts in their in their coffee. He, he did, did do that. That's gay. Anyways, <laughs> Paramount <laughs> did tweet on February fifteenth that Sonic Three is in development. Woo! Which, if you watch the movie, you would also get confirmed because there's a character they found. That, you know. I kind of hate how they do that, how they're like, we're going to do another movie. And I'm like, what if you didn't? What if, what if you don't do another movie? Like, then what? They look stupid, okay? Mm -hmm. Although, you know what? You, can't, you cannot match the excitement of when, you, when we saw that first Sonic and Tails was at the end. The excitement. Palpable. The feeling. It was palpable. Just the feeling of watching Sonic 1. And it was a video game movie that went well, you know? And it was, it was a great. Um, it's debatable, especially now with like Sonic 2 in comparison. Because Sonic 1 was a, a very much found family buddy cop movie, and everyone was like, oh, boo, where's the action? And then Sonic 2 obviously had all this action, and this and that, and uh, crazy. Yeah. I don't want to go like retroactively be like, well, Sonic 1 sucked, because Sonic 2 is better. I love Sonic 1. I watched, I made my dad watch it with me, and I was <laughs> like, this is, this is peak cinema. I mean, I didn't, it's not, but like, I'm like, this is really good. And then, like, number it's, two is peak cinema. Pe uh, Pulp number, fiction? Eh. Sonic they 2. Do, they do a great job at, like, getting better. Obviously, they, they took a big risk with Sonic 1. They were like, oh, this might not go well. It's a video game movie. Then Sonic yeah. 2, they were like, OK, that went well. We know. Let's go. So I, I do think that's really good. And I, I don't know. I think they, they executed it well. What, what were we originally talking about? Jim Carrey, I think, but we're kind of over Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey. Well, but oh, we're talking him. about um, who would take over next, which. Oh, um, well, I'm the Sonic expert here, so we should probably be consulting you, I guess. Yeah. Um, like I said, Metal like, Sonic. The mic's on you? I want to see Metal Sonic so bad. Please. <laughs> He's so cool. <laughs> He's so cool. And Sonic has been so cocky, and like, that's perfect. That's who he is. And like, if you throw this metal. This metal song back at him and like, oh. I mean, it's like literally so him. good. It's literally. I him. do think that would be smart, and they might possibly go that route. Because he still has the quill. He I think Robotnik still has some songs. He does so have some quill. That. It'd be perfect. Paramount, please. Metal Sonic, for her sake. <laughs> please. And I want a free poster of the Sonic Two movie poster. The one we had up here. That or I'm gonna punch someone. I'm gonna give him a knuckle sandwich. Like when, dude, knuckles is so good. We punch him in the wall. I can't get over it. <laughs> you, you are, you are great. I do think when you read up Sonic's arrogance, I think that's why Sonic and Robotnik are such an amazing duo. They're both arrogant, but not in like a, a like terrible to be around way. And uh, I'm better than you. I have to prove it. But. I, I'm not good enough to prove I'm not actually as good as I think I am, you know? Yeah, it's like an actual, like, they truly believe, like, obviously Robotnik is a lot more, like, um, I lost my train of thought, but he's a lot more, like, like, scientific and very, like, I know I'm right because I've always been right, and Sonic is just like, I'm cool and I'm spunky and I'm always right, you know? Yeah, like, it's more like, so like a, 
I'm right because I'm from this world. I can make all these cool bots and they can do this and that. And, you know. But at the same time, like, the bot there does a weird dance if you would like to. Show I would it. love to show you guys. <laughs> I, I, okay, you, I'm sure you've seen it. You have to have seen it. Hey. Give me a minute, guys. Michelle doesn't know how to use technology, despite being born in 2003. That's crazy. I love him. This this <laughs> scene, I remember watching it in the first one. It was the best scene ever. Like this is what I mean. He's just he's just a funky little guy. Like he busts down hard. He's just <laughs> hilarious. And like, he just does the randomest stuff, and he's supposed to be, like, this villain that you gotta take so seriously, but it's like, you can't. He's running from a fake dinosaur. Jim Carrey was the perfect Robotnik. I know it was kind of, like, a little weird when people announced, uh, or when, you know, Paramount Mounts announced that Jim Carrey was gonna do Eggman. They couldn't I, I think Jim Carrey just kind of has that vibe where, like, if he's announced as a character, you're like, Jim Carrey. <laughs> what a man, but Jim Carrey. <laughs> Are we sure? And then he always does the role great. He's he's just, I think it's also because everyone just knows him from The Grinch. Everyone's like, The Grinch? That man? Yeah. <laughs> Which like, he did that good too. He was, he's, he's a funny man. I have to be, and Jim Carrey's a funny man. He's a funny man, he's a perfect Eggman. Um, if you're not a Sonic fan, I really implore you to just look up like cutscenes of him from like the modern games. He's just so goofy and it's perfect here. Like, like Robotnik, he is the villain, but he's just a goofy guy. He's just a silly, goofy man. Oh my god, that's perfect. I love when technology actually works out. <laughs> okay. When technology works, that's crazy. Yeah, he's. I'm. St I was so upset when you told me he was gonna retire. I don't know if you like saw it when you told me after the movie ended. I was like, what? <laughs> that's so sad. He's like so. Uh, it's just so upsetting. I know. I mean, the Sonic franchise has Because I'm just such grow, a firm but... believer that he's such a good Robotnik. They won't replace him, which is the good thing. No, they're not replacing him, which I think that would make it so much worse if they just replaced him. They, they would tank the movie. And, and <laughs> their sales would go down. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And they said and, that if he wants to come back, they're more than well, like he's more than welcome, which is awesome. And, we'll see and I think does. just Robotnik and Stone, their dynamic, it's just, it's funny. Like, there's a scene in the first one where Robotnik... He, he's getting in his, like, oh, I have to beat this hedgehog. And he tells Stone, he goes, pin yourself to the wall. And Stone just throws himself back, <laughs> pins himself to the wall, and he's, like, holding himself like this at the wall. And Robotnik just walks up to him, and he just, like, gets all up in his face, and he's talking to him, and he just grabs this man's bottom jaw, reaches in his mouth, grabs his bottom jaw, and just <laughs> holds him there. <laughs> and... It's just such a crazy, like, line of events that, like, he pinned himself to the wall. He just grabbed his jaw. It's just, like, it's funny. Because it's, it's yeah. so unbelievable and, like, just random that it's hilarious. It's really good, too, because in the Sonic cartoons, if you talk about, like, the ones that were, I believe, in the late 90s, made by, like, the ones that were voiced by Jaleel White, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, Robotnik was, you know, he had like late, he had lame sidekicks. He had really lame sidekicks. There was this like robot and this chicken, which that was like a goofy cartoon, so it was fine, you know. Um, in the more serious one, the Sad AM one, they had like this, this guy with this big nose. I think it was like his nephew or something. I hmm. think that was the right cartoon. He was like sniffing, like, yes, doctor. Like, it was just kind of like, okay. And then like Sonic Boom, I, he's got like the two robots, which are completely forgettable. Same with Sonic, Sonic X. Sonic Boom itself. As someone who's never watched it, but I've heard a lot about it, <laughs> it just fits like the vibe that I think Jim Carrey's Robotnik would fit in so well. Like he'd fit in that universe great. <laughs> exactly, and yeah, it's yeah. just it's just goofy. But I do think I like that Doctor Stone is like Agent hit, Stone. A Agent Stone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I was saying Doctor Stone a while ago, so it was my fault. But his name is Agent Stone. I'm sorry. Agent Stone. Apologies. <laughs> Dumb. Robotnik's the doctor. I forgot he calls him doctor. <laughs> Anyways, it's like um, he's clearly the sidekick. He's clearly like, you know, Robotnik's secondhand man who does all like his his bidding in a sense. Well, Robotnik's off like beating the. <laughs>
<laughs> out of Knuckles' uh, <laughs> stone stays there, and he, he finds new outfits for him, and he like he's doing the behind the scenes. Uh, like when they were in the big robot, he was on the sidelines controlling it. That's something else. I'm sorry. I, I'm playing not, not devil's advocate. I'm like Sonic fan advocate. So Sonic when <laughs> when when they're in piloting the big. I think it's called the Death Egg Robot. Don't come at me, Sonic fans. I don't remember the name, but it's, it's the big boss from Sonic 2. Mm -hmm. And Stone has to pilot it. And he pulls out the instruction manual, and it looks like the instruction manuals from the, the Genesis games. It's got like oh, the, yeah, that's I what I was trying to tell you, but I was like I so excited, you. I blurted it out. I don't, I don't know if it's a word scram, but you understood. I, I heard it. That was so cool. I was looking at it, and I was like, oh my god, that kind of looks like what I've seen before. That you was know? really cool. So. Wrapping this up, this, the people who made this movie, they I can tell they have a passion for Sonic. I can tell they like Sonic. I can tell that Sega was involved. And you know what? That's how you make success. Because same thing happened with Percy Jacks is they shut out the writer. He even told them in one of their scripts, he was like, goes, hey, I think this would work a lot better. This works for like the series. This change is weird. If you guys do it this way, it will still work with what you're trying to go for. Mm -hmm. you know. And they, they do it well. I feel like that happens with a lot of movies, though. Like, they're like, the, yeah. big franchise, give me, no, stay out of this writer who made it, who's not as famous as our production company. Yeah. Stay there. Yeah, and they slap and a then, big name And then they just, like, work. throw it in a trash fire, pull it back out, pull out its ashes, and it's like, here, take it. It's for you. <laughs> and it doesn't work. And then they're like, this works. Why didn't it work? Wait, video games funny. just suck. They just they just make our kids violent. God, not these video games. And it's like, like clearly you can tell like there is a love for Sonic. There is a lot of knowledge on the lore and how the games go. And I, you know, Paramount did a good job. I, yeah. I, I I thoroughly enjoy it. And I'm not really the type to be a fan of like live action movies. Like when everything was going live action, I was kind of. Yeah, it's. it's eh, I mean. It is how things are going, and it is, you know, just the way things are, and the way, like, obviously, it's mostly kids' movies that are getting live action, so. It's more expensive to animation. That's why I'm excited for Illumination's Mario movie. I heard a rumor it's coming out December of this year. My local movie theater worker will let me know and get me tickets. <laughs> no. What if I don't? I end this what are you gonna do? I, I will end this podcast. I will start beating you. That's not an actual threat. I am not an adult <laughs> threatening a minor. Would you like to say that again, Michelle Zielinski? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll step up, step up. We're See, we're cool. Um, I had a point. Oh, but they're throwing Chris Pratt on Mario, just like throwing big names at hoping it works. Nintendo better know something that we don't. But that, that's about Mario. I don't so. think they know. I think they're just pulling big names. I mean, they threw Jim Carrey, which was a big name, but like also robotic. But like, it's Jim Carrey at the same so time. So it works. I don't. I don't know how Jack Black's gonna do Bowser, but I'm also not a big fan of Jack Black. I'm also. I like, feel like Bowser isn't know. the same as like robotic. Like I feel like he could also kind of in a way pull off the robotic because he's also kind of just silly, goofy. Yeah, but it, in different ways. Yeah. They're they're both very silly people, but like in different ways, obviously, because. That's just how they are, but I think as Bowser, who feels like he's more of like a serious villain, I don't know how he's gonna pull it off. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very interesting, but I just, I hope that for the future, when people want to make video game movies, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just hope that they take a lesson from Sonic and they understand that you need to enjoy the source material, and not even enjoy, but take from the source material, because they do things on their own. The rings have never been used to like travel dimensions, as far as I know. I mean, I only played like the classic games. After Sonic Adventure, I, I never played anything. I didn't even play that game, but they never used the rings for travel. In the, in the cartoons, it was actually a like, power ring of sorts. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're making what they can out of it, and as far as I know, the Chaos Emeralds were never inside of the Master Emerald, which it is in this movie, which is like a nice... Fun little I, like I do owls. think it was a nice way because you know they're caught they're obviously at this dilemma where they're like how is he going to get the green hill zone which is a place on earth rather than like in his dimension yeah so I do think like the ring transportation it also looks really nice looks good like, it was creative it was, it was different it was, it was just it was just out different in the right way just basically like the final thoughts of this movie Sonic paved the path basically for video game movies like they they plowed that that path they paved it for everyone they're like this is how we do it yeah they're... and they did it great they they might have a Sonic resurgence like they did in the 90s I mean Sonic was kind of being Mario for a bit 
Um, it was kind of with that transition to 3D that Sonic fell off. So who knows? We could have a second coming of it's not Christ, the second coming of Sonic, and I'm I'm here. Take me, dude. <laughs> Take Let's me. go. Yeah, no, I, I do think it's really good. Does, you know how, like, Nintendo and Sega were fighting? Does this mean Sega wins? Because that Mario movie was, it, it was bad. Well, it was a new Mario movie. So S Nintendo won, because Sega doesn't make consoles anymore. So I'm talking about the movie industry. Uh, well, movie we're not talking about console wars. This is not a console podcast. This is a movie podcast. Anyways, come visit me at my theater. Nerds? Don't Nerds. don't do that. Don't don't. Why? Should I dox your location? <laughs> she works at. <laughs> Would you like to say that, Michelle? <laughs> yeah, Michelle. <laughs> I, I can dox where you live. Why would you do that? <laughs> Just like. So Sonic comes to you. <laughs> Sonic like wind up noise the entire time you're doxing me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know your address. It's just somewhere somewhere on. I'm sent to that Did one. I mean, you can come and visit me at Crestwood, guys. I won't say hi. I don't think. <laughs> they, they, she won't. I, I don't think many people are gonna watch this podcast to begin with because it's on an Ellen B. Shepherd <laughs> media production. If page. you're here, you're probably but, me or you're Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Or Polini. Hi, Polini. Hi, Miss Polini. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> or you're me. Can I be you? Can we switch? I want to. Or it's you. your dad. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna watch this far. Oh. If he is. Skip to it so he can see me say hi. Yeah, I mean, what's a funny thing to do with my dad? I don't know. That's basically the end. We like the movie. Well, uh, all right, out of five stars, in terms of how much you liked it, what would you give it? In terms of how I liked it? Mm. Yes. Would you, like, would you watch it again, like, show it to people, like, would you like it? I, you know? I'd give it five stars. Okay. Because I know we like, do plan on seeing it again with a, a mutual friend, so I'd, I'd be willing to watch it again. I'd, I'd enjoy it. As a movie. As a movie overall, yeah, I think it's pretty good. But again, I don't. I, I'm a movie theater worker. I don't watch many movies though. I do mm. think it was a pretty good movie. I think it had a nice mixture of action and cinematography. And despite me not being in Miss Please digital media class, I am cinematography. That's why I really enjoyed the last night in Soho cinematography. That's another thing I can That's go on That's a good one. That's, That's a good a one. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think the cinematography was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed, like, I was engaged the entire time. I laughed at some parts, you know. It, it just had me, had me watching it. I think it has a lot of kids' attention, too. None, there were no loud kids there, except for, like, the time they were laughing really loudly. Yeah. You are those kids. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I'd, I'd probably give it five stars. Five stars on like a basic movie? On uh, a basic movie? Five, five for like, water, like your enjoyment, but like as a movie, like critic, more like critical. What are you thinking? Three and a half, four. I was gonna say three and a half too, just because like there is a bit of a plot hole where it's like, why do they just run and do it? Like he's the fastest thing alive. He can exceed the the speed of sound. It, it was for like prolonging reasons. So. Yeah, I, I'm fine with it. I don't care about too many plot holes, and I'm not as long as it's like super massive. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I fi it's fine, but like as a movie reviewer, that's something that should be taken into account. So three, three and a half, you know, the, the last scene where they're fighting the death egg, egg robot. That was cool. I saw that on TikTok as kind of a spoiler. I scrolled away so fast. I was like, <sighs> I'm sitting next to her in oh. this, <laughs> this theater that is soundproofed. <laughs> Will be. Not sponsored. <laughs> I don't know if something not sponsored. You just doxed your workplace, but okay. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> you you bling it out. It's okay. You, you want me to bling it? I don't it's really a workplace. Care. It's, well, it's, go go ahead with what saying. Anyways, it's just a workplace. What was I saying? Oh, I'm I'm sitting next to her. First mistake, <laughs> sitting next to her. Should have had a, a buffer seat between us. Second mistake, <laughs> that scene coming on while I'm sitting next to her. I sit next to me. <gasps> oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> Edison, Edison, it's from the thing. It's from the game. <laughs> Yeah. It was so cool. I gotta find a picture of it. You're stuck on this podcast a little longer. I'm sorry. I have to find this. Talk. Fill, fill, the, fill the void while I find this. Um, the void that I can fill is that Jim Carrey, guys. Oh, we can talk about cinematography. This is for you, Miss Pligny. So I do think, like, 
as I mentioned earlier, the clashing colors, obviously, they're um, the primary colors, which from an artistic standpoint is very like aesthetically pleasing. I, in a way, you could say it's aesthetically pleasing, but like obviously because of color theory and like the color wheel, it just is great to look at, especially when you put it against like the, because it's earth, so it's earthy tones. It's not like this crazy universe that has, you know, different tones, um, like brighter colors. It's they clash and they stand out and it's just it's crazy yep that's that's the thing she was like Harrison Harrison you gotta see this are you watching yeah I'm watching I was watching <gasps> and they're flying oh dude I can't I d about this though I do think the way they did that and then they jumped to the inside where obviously Robotnik is you know controlling it I do think that was a nice jump and I do think like the way they set up the inside of the robot, he was like kind of floating there and he had, you know, the, the Master Emerald? Yeah, yeah. He had the Master Emerald, which was like causing all this like lightning to come off his body, the, the power from it. I do think like just the darkness in there with like the lightning every now and then, just him controlling, I, I think it was really nice, especially with the jump cuts. Yeah, it was really cool and like I really, really, really love how they got the plane because that was a big, not a huge part of Sonic 2, but there is a level where it's you're on the plane. Tails is kind of recognized for Yeah, tail, Tails drives a plane, Sonic's on the top like a, the cool kid he is, and I, that's peak Sonic. When he's on that plane and they're going around, I can't articulate it, but it's so cool. Just overall, I genuinely really want to cool. cry. It's so cool. This is we saw so the passionate. plane earlier <laughs> in the movie. Like it's it's kind of it's there. And if you know the plane, like that's that's another thing. Um, <laughs> like someone who knows Sonic and recognizes the plane. If you saw that in the background, I'd be like, oh my god, that's the plane. And I know. I was like, it's the plane. It's the plane. It's gonna be the tornado. <laughs> it's gonna be the tornado. <laughs> and of course, if you're not like you know a Sonic fan who knows of like the tornado and stuff, which you're kind of lame if you don't. Um, <laughs> oh, it, 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 would, it would fly over your head, ha, pun intended. I'm, I'm just as funny. Guys, make me the new Robotnik. I'm killing you with my mind. <laughs> Anyways, I do think it was really cool that it was like, we could see it in the beginning. Um, and that like, later on it came in and you, you heard the plane noise, you went, oh my god, they hijacked that plane. Because it was originally for a wedding. <laughs> yeah, no, you see in the background, that was really cool. Like the avalanche scene, I saw that in like the trailers where Tom throws the ring, which he, it's such a That's satisfying so, motion. It's so cool because the camera, it, the ring is coming at the camera and then it like turns with the ring and the ring goes and it, it just winds out. Cause like that's how it works. It goes from this tiny little like ring that goes on your hand and just, Get, goes big and you can see like this the, you know, the place it's you know opening up to and you see all the snow and sonic and tails and they're just flying through it and it was just great it, it so you had really fun epic moments like that like action is probably one of my favorite genres and this movie delivers and i i'm gonna kiss the director on the lips jeff fowler if you're kiss watching me on the lips this is an invite to kiss her on the lips Let's not go that far. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut it out. <laughs> I, I'm 18 though. I don't know. Hmm. What do you look like? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How you spell his name? Jeff, uh, F-O-W-L-E-R. Wow, I'm so glad it looks too fun on camera for that one. Is he hot? Should, we should probably airplay him, huh? No, it's fine. You guys don't get to see. I'll put a post. I'll put, I'll post. put it in post. Is he hot? He looks like... He looks like Tom. Do you? I mean, I'd kiss him for Sonic. For Sonic? I'd kiss him for Sonic. I'd kiss Ben, kiss ben Schwartz. Why is he here? <laughs> he looks like he's going to ask me if he has games on this phone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh, I thought I saw the Sonic go VAD. I got so excited. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? You should, you should watch this because I'm going to make you watch it anyway. You should do the second podcast with me. Okay. We got her, folks. All right, well, thank you for watching this podcast. It's been far long enough. Pauline, I know you hate me because now you have to upload this all to YouTube, but I'm the one editing it, so... She's got to edit it. you got to upload it. It's a compromise. Yeah. We can end this with the depot. Join us next time.